welcome to another episode of the Dog and Thimble Newscast, your weekly recap of the news that matters, both in podcast form and available on YouTube. I am your host, Hillary Goldstein. Let's get into the news. Another good week of news stories. Survive Space Attack Details Stronghold Games recently revealed its release schedule for 2015. Most notable on the list was a new game, Survive Space Attack, that took a classic and gave it a welcome twist. Well, last week Stronghold released new details on Survive Space Attack, and well, it sounds pretty awesome. Survive Space Attack is based off Survive Escape from Atlantis, which is a game about getting your meeples safely to a beach as the island they're on is sinking. So imagine that in space, but uh, not an island anymore, of course. Instead, you're escaping a space station under attack from aliens. Rather than whales and sharks, it's alien creatures roaming the station. This alone shows excellent design choices because sharks and whales in space is ridiculous and too terrifying to be part of any board game. Thankfully, they decided to choose switch that to alien creatures. If you've played the original Survive, you can probably get the gist and imagine the possibilities. If not, well, just understand that you're scrambling to have your meeples with secret point values under their feet escape while trying to ensure others fall victim to an alien raid. Designed by Brian Sidney and Jeff Engelstein of Space Cadets fame, Survive Space Attack takes the core idea of the original and adds some new twists. A double-sided game board allows for different setups to add some variety you can now temporarily stave off losing ground on the quote-unquote island, aka space station, with the use of laser turrets, fighter ships that can capture and move aliens, new tile abilities, four different tile thicknesses, and alien creatures that evolve throughout the game. Survive Space Attack is expected this September for 50 bucks. Coming at the same time are two expansions, Survive Space Attack, the crew strikes back, uh, which uh, adds new crew members, uh, with uh, unique abilities. It's a small 20 card expansion, but it's only 10 bucks. The other expansion is also 10 bucks and it is called five to six players and it really lives up to its name. Uh, it adds 20 new spaceman meeple tokens, enabling you to go from the base game's four player cap all the way up to six players. A version of Flux I will actually play. I got nothing against Flux other than that I've never really loved the game. It's sort of advanced Uno, often tied to something fun and nerdy, Cthulhu, Monty Python, etc. But it's not one that has ever grabbed me. This summer, there's a version of Flux I will most definitely pick up. Adventure Time Flux is the latest in a line of Cartoon Network's Flux titles, but it's probably the best, because it's Adventure Time. End of argument. If the latest issue of Game Trade Magazine... In the latest issue of Game Train Magazine, designer Andrew Looney discusses the design process for Adventure Time Flux, and in doing so, revealed some of the cards and characters we'll see, and some we won't. Adventure Time Flux isn't much of a departure from the normal Flux, but it does add a new element. An action card called the Arena is something quite different from the made from the for the Madcap card game. Can't speak today. When you play the arena, the other players must choose one of the character cards to submit to a test of combat. Each player then argues why their character would surely win, meaning you actually need to know a bit about Adventure Time or you'll be at a severe disadvantage. And frankly, I only hang out with people who know about Adventure Time, so this will be no problem for me. The person who played the arena card then chooses the winner who gets to keep their card. The others discard their combatant. Other cards include James Baxter, who shows up just to make everyone feel great. When he's played, every player receives another card, and all creepers are removed from play. Speaking of creepers, there are four in Adventure Time Flux, Candy Zombies, The Lich, Hunson Abadir, and Magic Man. And yes, these four can actually be sent into the arena. Probably the best news is that there is a nod to Adventure Time's Card Wars episode. It comes via the Floop the Keeper card. Okay, so it's not... All great news for Adventure Time fans. There is an unfortunate omission made simply because there were just only so many cards Looney could include in Adventure Time Flux. There are no gender-swapped characters. No Fiona, no Cake, or any of the others. If it makes you feel any better, you can pretend BMO is a gender-swapped card. Nobody will know the difference. It's possible Cake and others will appear in a future expansion. Fingers crossed. Adventure Time Flux is expected this summer, likely in August. Get your ass to Mars! Board games no longer have to be put out to pasture. What's old is new again thanks to revised editions of classics and obscure board games alike. The King of New Editions, 
Fantasy Flight Games is reviving another board game, this time providing a re-release of Bruno Cathala, who is famous for Abyss and Shadows of Cam- over Camelot, and Bruno Faducci, who did Citadels and Lost Temple, a game called Mission Red Planet. Ice and unique resources, Solarium and Sylvanite, have been discovered on Mars, opening the possibility that the Red Planet could be colonized. Now it's a race to be the first corporation to exploit Mars. Drill, baby, drill! Take over, take, taking place over 10 rounds, Mission Red Planet has you utilizing a crack team of soldiers, scientists, and others to uncover the secrets of Mars and make some quick cash. That might come in the form of getting the most resources, and only those with the most science or the most astronauts on a location can mine those goods when it's time to score, or by making something like a unique scientific discovery. The discovery cards tell a lot about our location sometimes providing an excess of resources, other times creating conditions where mining would not be possible. Trick is, these discovery cards are revealed at the end of the game, but scientists can peek at them early. Now, since these cards are randomly placed on the board, each game you play out will feel a little bit different. New to this edition is Phobos, Mars's potato-shaped moon, adding a whole new location to utilize. Missions and discovery cards have been fine-tuned, new action cards have been added to the deck, and the game now plays up to six with a two-player variant. You can blast off to Mars this summer. Rattle, battle, grab the loot. Ignacia Trebuchet, whose name I totally said wrong, he made Robinson Crusoe and Imperial Settlers. His name pronunciation has flummoxed many. I practiced it so much and totally blew my mind when I tried to say it now, and I'm gonna just go with it. He's going to go a little bit more casual for his next game. Rattle Battle Grab the Loot is a game of piracy on the high seas where each player is battling for the favor of the Pirate King. It's a game about dice. Lots of dice. Like rolling 20 of them all at once. Those dice which are gathered not just from your own pool but from every other player's dice pool as well are rolled in a special box. What you roll also determine what you roll and also where the dice land determine the outcome of your turn. Fight other pirates, loot merchant ships, and snatch loot to earn favor and come out on top. The most interesting aspect of Rattle Battle Grab the Loot is that each player's ship is physically customizable. Every upgrade is a cardboard piece that changes the look of your ship. Now, there are unique crew members and items too, but it's the ability to create a unique ship that really perks up my ears when I'm hearing about this new game. A two to five player game, Rattle Battle Grab the Loot, I love saying that name, is not a short one. It's said to take up to 90 minutes to play, which in reality probably means as you're learning the rules, it's going to actually take close to two hours. You can pick it up at Gen Con 2015 in July, or if you are not going to Gen Con, you'll be able to find it at your local game store in August for $60. Fantasy Flight Expansion Galore! Fantasy Flight Games announced a slew of expansions last week, so let's run through them quickly. Other Core Strange Remnants added some famous mysticalish places for exploration the Mayan temples of Chichen Itza, the Great Wall of China, Stonehenge, and Easter Island are part of a new Mystic Ruins encounter deck. Didn't really know that the Great Wall of China was considered mystic or a ruins, but who am I to question the wisdom of the Ancient Ones? The Elder Horror expansion is out this fall. Also coming this fall is the fourth expansion to the Lord of the Rings The Card Game. The Land of Shadow follows Frodo through the second half of the Two Towers and includes three new scenarios. How do you want to say that word? Plus, Gollum. Everybody loves Gollum. First, he comes to you as an enemy. Then, once defeated, he becomes an untrustworthy ally, leading you through the dead marches. 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 I really can't speak today. I apologize. And then there's the other card game based on a huge license property. That's Star Wars The Card Game. It expands with Imperial Entanglements, which focuses on the Imperial Navy and then smugglers and spies. Of course, no expansion about the Imperial Navy would be complete without good old Grand Moff Tarkin so expect him to be included, plus a bunch of Wookiees. And yeah, that means a new version of Chewbacca as well. As with other expansions, this will be out in the fall. That's right, there's a lot of fall activity going on in expansion land for Fantasy Flight. Now, if you can't wait until fall to get a ton of expansion, then I have good news for you. Coming this summer is yet another expansion for Talisman. Yes, one of the most random and awful games in modern history expands once again because money. Seriously, guys, if you don't want them to keep making game. Stop buying expansions for Talisman. The game's terrible. Stop helping him out. Anyway, 
The Harbinger is another small box talisman expansion, this one having something to do with the end of the world, which will come sooner than you can finish your last game of talisman because the game drags on forever because it's terrible. And now, it's time for the Kickstarter Spotlight of the Week. And this week, the light shines on Fantasy Coins. That's right, not a game, but Fantasy Coins, an enhancement for your games. If you want to spice up your tabletop games, one great way is to improve the components. And the absolutely coolest upgrade option is Fantasy Coins. They are beautiful sets of 10 coins that can work for a variety of games and help immerse you a bit more in the fantasy. You have a bunch of design options to choose from, so there is definitely something for anyone's needs. Now, personally, I like the Hex Gems, which can instantly up the quality of life and mana tokens in probably just about every game that I own. You can back this for as little as $14, which gets you a set of 30 coins. And I mean, these are sweet looking coins. Not a bad deal at all. The project has already surpassed its funding goal of $45,000 and fulfillment is expected in September. So I would say as long as you know that you're going to be playing games again still into September, this is probably one worth backing because really 15 bucks for 30 friggin' cool coins, that, that's worth it alone. Well, that is all the news worth cramming into your ears this week. Thanks for joining me. We'll be back next week with yet another slew of great board gaming news for you.